Hi, this is Al Fritsch. Uh, we have a series of how-tos, and this is how to begin or develop an herbal garden. Now these can be done near the home and usually near the kitchen because people like to take herbs and pinch off some and put them in the salad and then the uh, dishes that they're cooking. Or it can be done in the general open area where we have church behind uh, institutions. We have uh, parking up above. Uh, people can come and see it. And so it's therefore, it's a public display. And that's what we're doing here. Not something that's for private utility only, though we can still pinch off bits of sage and, bar and parsley. Uh, but at the same time, it is something more. It's a, cert it's a beauty, a use of landscape that's not just a, uh, an, a lawn, but it is something where great variety of plants are present. And that's one of the things about herbs. You'd say, what are all the herbs of the world? Well, depends how you define them. It's not more than just medicinal, or, um, uh, medicinal plants. Uh, it's not more than just culinary cooking plants. Uh, it's also a variety that has beauty to it. In fact, the word herb is used um, to mean generally plants. And only in a specific way do we go and sort of subdivide them from garden vegetables and fruits, which we all know to be what seed bearing and other types that are used uh, for food. But uh, really herbs cover a wide variety of things, even flowers. And so for that reason, we have a variety in here already. Uh, there's about 24, we're just beginning uh, our herb garden here. And uh, we should really talk about it from different aspects, more than just uh, what's in it. The first thing is selection. Selection of what? Selection of the site. So we have people from our parish who are on the committee and uh, they set up a place that was not too wet as our land over here to the left is more or less wetland and swamp that hasn't been developed fully, nor is it on the hillside, nor is it where there's too much sun, nor where there's too little sun. So what we're trying to do is find a place of moderation. Thank you. My name is Angela and my friend Renee and I are going to um, set up the perimeter for, um, for an earth guard uh, for the grounds here. And, uh, we want it to be a little bit higher, higher area. It's going to be a raised bed, possibly with spokes between the herbs so you can clean and walk between it. And um, we're just going to kind of lay these sticks down now because um, we've walked the property and this will be the best place. For okay, it. great. Hi, we're with Jim Cohen, and I just want to have some questions. How did you prepare the lovely herb garden down there? Okay, well, first I did pretty good making a very good circle. And um, I'm, I kind of have a pretty good sense about things like that. Um, I didn't dig as deep as I originally wanted to because there's slate. And the oh, right. soil gets pretty bad. So I dug about eight inches deep, and then I... Um, knocked all the dirt off the loose dirt off the sod off I the guess sod. okay <laughs> all, everything on the side then I put the sod back upside down so the grass would be unlikely to grow but Great. It still provide nutrition for the plants. excellent yeah for compost so then I put the good dirt on top okay and then the manure that you got I mixed in with the dirt kind of like double digging in a way or yeah. with, okay and I probably spent more time beating the dirt off the sod than anything else. Tough, tough sod we have here. <laughs> but um, I, I think it's going to be a good thing to grow uh, most of the herbs you want yeah, to grow. Yeah, I think already there um, there's, haven't been in that long and it already looks good down there. And, and then I had uh, it was actually the idea of Angela at this church to make the six spokes. Okay. And um, I left grass, but they were afraid they'd have trouble getting people to take care of the grass, although it would 
could be weed eater or clipped or whatever. Sure. If a weed eater was careless, it might you know get an herb. Right. And right. So I had nothing to do with replacing the grass with the mulch. Okay. I, that, I just gave it, me I, You know, it looks fine. It's actually kind of beautiful and it's, it's really quite attractive. Yeah. It really adds something to the and the different combination of the different colors: the, the brown, the tan, the uh, gravel. Yeah, the tan, striking. The green. Uh, it's actually quite attractive. Well, Jim, thanks for your hard work on this, and uh, okay. I can't wait to see see how it grows. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, there is a lot of water comes in this area, so that's why we circled this uh, in design. Um, not only the design was what it looks like around, but it's also the design was to include gravel, so that it's like an artificial aquifer. It's where water can, from inside, can settle down and go out into there uh, when it's too much of it. So it helps moderate the amount of moisture within the garden when we have wet periods of time. And so that's the reason why we put the gravel circular uh, in the circular place in which they're here. The design had other things in mind too. You can see that actually uh, the design includes, it's like uh, a six uh, slice pies of a cake uh, of a pie, and uh, the slices uh, each have a pathway. Uh, it originally was uh, was uh, beautifully done in uh, in uh, lawn, but we decided that the maintenance of that was really very great, and so for that reason, we put uh, mulch in there uh, and covered it in such a way that it is not going to be. Uh, that the grass will not grow underneath it. And so uh, we've done that as a place in which you can walk into, and yet you can reach out and get your hands on all the plants that are within that area. Dave St. Ficra, the patron of herbs, a central place, but since ours is a community garden, we don't emphasize that point too much because Catholics think a little more of it than do some Protestants. But he was already in our place, and so we th thought that that was the most ideal spot for him, the statue. Uh, the, um, we, the, the pies of the cake are involved, and therefore uh, there's a second aspect to the design, and that is that we try to raise this, and we will probably raise uh, the level of that soil even more, and we give it a lot of attention. And so we're going to give you a little uh, excerpt from the fellow who did that, Jim Cohen, and we will have that as part of our display. Uh, so uh, really, the design here was circular so that everybody could reach in and put something down or take something out as they see fit without touching too much of the rest of the, of the garden space. Now it's just beginning, therefore, we have 24 different plants in there. You might think that I would be encyclopedic and therefore tell you what each plant is and where it stands and, do and does things. I can do a few, but not all of them. And that's really not the purpose of this. We can, you can have books and books, and the internet is full of people telling you what the different herbs are. The one on the far end is wormwood, uh, and I had to put, bring the whole plant down from my own from my own herb garden that was had already started because it was only one stalk uh, and uh, that means Chernobyl in Russian and Ukrainian and uh, that is a plant that's found uh, in the Bible itself and look at the book of Revelations and you will find much about that plant in there. Um, but I, we could go from, for, for all of them, oregano, uh, we have sage, uh, in spots where you have some mint, and we wonder about the mint, keeping our hands, our uh, fingers crossed, because it's going to not only flourish, it will move out across the whole slice itself. Luckily, we have made divisions, therefore any one of them that becomes too prolific will not go into another section, and therefore that will s save the amount of uh, care that we have to give it. And that brings us to more than just the preparation of the soil, is how does the land itself, uh, how do we keep it maintained? And that was the reason why we took out the sod 
and the beautiful greenery that was in each of the six spokes, and in place of those, made it so we didn't have to maintain uh, that part of lawn care. Uh, but it still will take some. We do not intend to have uh, too much watering. My own herbal greenhouse uh, patch, I've never so much as watered it ever. Some of those plants, oregano and some of those uh, have never been watered, sage. Some of them grow in semi-dry areas, and in those dry areas, they, uh, they do very well uh, by just seasonal rainfall and being able to hold themselves together. Others, especially when we put them in, have to be watered maybe for a little bit in a very dry summer so that they don't wilt and die on us all. Uh, the, uh, so therefore, it's not only the planning of where and the design of what it's going to be, but also that third part is how do you set up the soil itself. The fourth point is, well, what herbs do you put in? And my answer is, whatever you like. Herbs are usually pretty friendly to each other, not perfectly, and you can find that in the book. Don't put fennel in with some of these things because they'll, they don't like fennel. But anyway, there's most plants are friendly with each other. And when they are, then you try to put things in there as you like them to be put in and used. Now some people say, are you gonna harvest them? Well, that's not the main purpose. An herbal patch where someone is doing that for uh, commercial reasons, well, you can harvest those, dry them and use them, break them up and use them uh, as spices and so forth. Uh, this is mostly for show. And we admit that. There's nothing wrong to have things that are just beautiful. And I think that around a church where people are trying to raise their minds to God, this is a very important thing to do, is to have beautiful settings in which we are and are present to others. Furthermore, whenever we touch the ground and actually do worship within that confine, we ought to taste the land itself and therefore we become the land. And therefore, part of growing our own uh, plants and uh, uh, the, the fruit and vegetables on our grounds, which we do, and if you sh shoot oh, a shot in the distance, you'll see our uh, orchard of trees that we have. We not only do that, but we also want to make some uh, herbs present so people have a taste of the exotic, not just the regular world in which we live. Here are some added points. The first is that as soon as we built this, we saw the footprints of what? Hoofprints of deer, because a person across the street here puts a salt block out and attracts large numbers. But they only ate the violets. They didn't eat much else. And uh, they just passed through. So what we have to really say is it's OK. Uh, but we, you would say, but they might eat up the something that they really like. And so you can always spray a little of it uh, with some hot sauce. And uh, the only problem with that, they won't eat it if it's, if it's very hot in taste. And if you actually ring, ring, uh, ring, put a ring around the, the uh, bed and put in mustard, which I do in some of my uh, garden space, they won't touch it then. They don't like mustard. And so that, can, and that applies also to other wildlife too. They don't like hot things, therefore uh, it, it is one thing to add that. The problem is you have a rain come and you have to do it again. You have to go at, right out because it'll wash off and you want to keep it in a fresh state. Uh, but really their visitation has not been harmful to us and they didn't find there near as much as the greenery they have all around, so therefore they didn't stay long and they didn't bother anything. There is a possibility, and I don't know what they are, but if there is the possibility that some of these uh, forms of wildlife, such as a groundhog, will like about anything and will eat up about anything if you allow them around. So control of the animal and protection of the animal is always an important aspect, but also we've got to protect the plants from the animals. And so therefore it's a, it's a balance that we've got to create. Well, that's one thing. The second thing is that uh, it's a sight to behold 
but it's also something that we work with. And as we work with herbs, we become more gentle. And when we become more gentle and able and respectful for all of God's creation, then we begin to see that, well, we vibrate. Can we say that? We vibrate with the animals and we vibrate, and most people know that about animals. They know when you have a friendly dog or cat and so forth. Uh, but we can vibrate with plants too. And that's what, that is why some people have green thumbs. They can grow things very well. Others don't. And my answer to them is be more respectful. Look at the plant. Be thankful that it is what it is. Let them see, let them feel that you are enjoying them. And they will enjoy in response. Some would say, oh, I don't believe that, but I do. It's part of the resonance of the world around us. God's creation resonates like God himself resonates. And so we, uh, we find that among our plants is to cultivate a green thumb through the use of herbs. It's a good and gentle way of doing it. The third thing is, not only is it something for you as an individual working with it, but it's also a lesson for the general community. We don't have to have a lawn of bluegrass alone, or maybe one other thing, and therefore kill the rest with herbicides. Consider the plants as being God's gift. We want to take these plants, these things that we have, and respect them in a very special way. And therefore, we celebrate with them. And we actually use them in some fashion, if we do. But we also, more than that, we are like a person who goes out and sightsees, which, by the way, is the number one uh, tourist attraction in the world, activity, and that is just to sightsee. Go and sightsee the herbal garden and keep watching it, helping it, moving it along, and celebrating with it. As a conclusion, we'll have a summary of all the things that a, an herb garden will give us. First, it's a testimony, celebration of the great, great variety of creation. And we have this before us because there are so many herbs and we will constantly be adding some to the garden itself. And that gives us that sense that there's more to go and also that we celebrate the greatness and the breadth of all of creation. Second, there's a change that's coming in our own life, and that change is shown every time we add things to a garden. We understand that that is changing. All life is. And so gardening, in whatever way it is, especially in herbal gardening, does give us that sense of change in our own life. Third, there's a beauty to it. It's beautiful. And therefore, it gives us color, the uh, Green is always has a little bit of red and other colors mixed in, but there's a beauty to just having variety, and that beauty is what we show here. And another area is that it's a youth educational opportunity. Really, it's an opportunity for us to see that God gives us uh, a chance to grow in our knowledge, and that young people can learn this uh, even in the church grounds in which they have, along with the homilies and the sermons that they hear within the structure. And uh, again, uh, there's the same could be said about adults. None of us have a complete answer on everything the herbal world is. We always learn more and more. And there's even hundreds or thousands that we can still learn of the varieties. And so education is part of our own life and we affirm it when we have an herbal garden. And another thing is, well, it replaces the lawn, the monoculture that we have of certain types of bluegrass or other gra uh, grasses, well, and then trying to keep them at a certain height at all times. But this is a transformation of the lawn into something that is, and we add another point, that is edible. Therefore, when we taste the, and pinch away, or we use some of it in culinary uh, arts that we have, we are in some ways saying that the yard is something that gives us, our yard gives us a chance to know ourselves better, and the food that we eat makes us what we are too. 
it's a care, it's also a challenge. It's a challenge to care for all creation. Because if we can care for our garden and maintain it, or we care for our herbal garden too, uh, it shows that we are caring people. And we can extend this to the plants, animals, and the humans in which we live. It's an invitation also to the parish itself to participate, be willing to be part of uh, the growing process, uh, the, the herbal development. It makes us one, it gives us one more step in which we can be uh, participating. And when a building has been built for a long period of time, well, there's not too much to be added to the building. But when the grounds can be improved and developed, then it is something that we participate in. And furthermore, it's not only open for the local community, the parish, but also for the general area. And this, we have an herbal club that meets here at the church structure every month. And it allows the entire community, more than those of just the church community, to participate in growing the garden. Likewise, it's an affirmation of simple living. It's the new types of approaches to things always add a lot of chemical medicines and so forth. And we then find out that a lot of this has already been done by uh, centuries of people treating themselves with different herbs and that these treatments are still valid in many ways. And therefore, we become more simple and willing in some ways to see the value of what a simple lifestyle of the past has to give us. It's part of our tradition and it's something that we cherish and respect. It's an edible landscape, as we said before, and therefore it can extend beyond the garden itself to include the whole plant life of the grounds, which would include the nuts and fruit trees that we're beginning to grow in the background. And uh, last of all, it's a model for churches. Churches shouldn't be just lawns, uh, being surrounded by lawns. They should, in some ways, show the world that we're committed to live more simply. And the herbal garden helps us do it. So we have many good reasons for doing this. And we've seen one already in its presence. So now we hope that uh, you take this and that you comment upon it and you think about it and actually extend and establish new herbal gardens throughout our country. This is Al Fritch coming to you from Earth Healing. Come and visit us, make comments, and please take and consider an herbal garden in your own backyard. Thank you.